about cliches like fighting dragons. This is power metal. News, reviews, interviews, and all things metal. From the Kensington Place Studios, it's According to Metal with Jason and Vince. Tis the season! There's family, there's friends, there's good food, there's booze, there's New Year's resolutions that are on the horizon. Things we're going to do better this year versus last year. And we sit and reflect on all the things we wish we would have done and what mistakes we won't make again. Well, on this episode of According to Metal, we're talking the best of 2016. That's what we're talking about on the show. No reviews. No Biv's Best Band you never heard of. Nuh-uh. We're just cutting right to the chase. We're doing some news. And we are going to do the best things that have happened this year in 2016 in regards to metal. And we are going to be joined later on to do those awards. Not only are Biv and I going to do those because, you know, we are the stars of the show. Let's be honest. Biv more so than myself. Let's be real. But we're also going to be joined by Lacey Mucklow from LadyObscure.com who's going to be sharing with us her thoughts and opinions on the best power metal album of the year, the best progressive metal album of the year, the best hard rock album of the year, the best just traditional good old heavy metal album of the year, the biggest disappointment, the best song, and the album of the year. All of those categories are going to be done by Biv, myself, and Lacey later on in the broadcast, so we're really excited for that. But speaking of Biv, Biv, we got an action-packed just a lot of discussion to have on this show. So I know we usually say, hey, what's up? How's it going? How are things? You want to talk some metal? But I already know the answer to that. Biv, we're talking metal, aren't we? Oh, we are. And just like Donald Trump at the Army-Navy game, you'll never know what we're going to say next. <laughs> That's absolutely true. <laughs> well said. Well said. And speaking <laughs> of that, for those of you who are listening, buckle up because it's going to be hopefully a really, really fun ride. And at the end of the episode... You also will get a chance to check out ways that you can listen to all of the nominations that we have in one little nice little package and one destination where you can listen to all this stuff. More to come on that later on in the broadcast, but uh, thank you so much for listening, whether you're listening on SoundCloud or Stitcher or iTunes or Spreaker or however you're listening to the show. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. Make sure we have a lot of new likes to the page uh, of the Facebook page, so if you are new to the show and you haven't liked us on Facebook, please go ahead and do so by just going to According to Metal on Facebook and clicking like. Also, a lot more active on Twitter. Biv is really kind of taking the reins on that one, so if you like to tweet, um, you know, make sure that you follow us at ATM or AT Metal Pod um, on Twitter. And Biv's been a lot more active on that. In fact, we had Evergrey follow us this week, and I know I can re- end 2016 a happy man knowing that Evergrey follows us on Twitter. So that's a good thing. Absolutely. So let's just jump right into this, shall we? Let's do yeah. the news and let's rock right into the albums of the year in each category. We got some news, and in fact, Biv, well. I don't want to get ahead of myself. It's time for the latest in metal news. Check it out. It's time to give you some headlines. The metal news you need to know right now. Every news segment we do here on According to Metal is Biv scouring the web, talking about the things that he thinks would be the best conversation for us to have in our news segment that we do on every episode. Rarely is it that I bring a topic or a news story to the table, but I am this week because I saw this story and it's, you know, one of those heart warmers, one of those things that really makes you just hope and, and, and wish for the best. And I cannot wait to check this out. And you just talk about unique. Anyway, enough build up. Um, Jason Becker, the incredibly talented guitarist who unfortunately almost 30 years ago, um, you know, uh, was diagnosed with ALS and has Lou Gehrig's disease. And of course, you know, formed the band and was, a, 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 a basically a, a teenage friend of Marty Friedman, uh, you know, um, had cacophony, which is just an incredible album, huge in Japan, or excuse me, incredible band had a couple albums. They became huge in Japan. And unfortunately his playing ability was ended far, far, far too soon. Um, he is somebody who has um, 
at this point in time has no use of his hands, his legs, anything. Um, software has been built for Jason Becker to be able to make music with his eyes. It's absolutely amazing stuff. And uh, Biv, I don't know if you know this, but he was on Indiegogo, needed to raise seventy-five grand to ha- make an album. Um, by the way, some of the people are going to be appearing on this album would be Joe Satriani, Gus G, of course, from Firewind and Ozzy Osbourne, uh, Jeff Loomis, Chris Broderick, and many, many more that are going to be on the album. Um, and I can tell you, Biv, he needed seventy-five grand. He's currently at ninety-six thousand. He has at one hundred and twenty-three percent of his goal. The album is a go, um, and it should be out around the summer of twenty seventeen. Um, and I want to hear it for a couple of reasons. A, I want to support Jason because I just think his story is absolutely amazing. But B, it will be the first album I know of that will be created with someone's eyes. Um, and I just cannot wait to hear how that turns out. And it sounds like the people he has that are going to be part of this album are going to be incredible. So um, I wanted to share that story with you and get your thoughts on that, Biv. Um, I don't know if you knew much about Jason Becker's backstory or the whole thing that led up to it, but it just it really, really sucks to see. And when you go back and YouTube some old Jason Becker clips, um, you're just like, this guy. I saw a video of Jason Becker playing um, like a, a high school talent show. I mean, he was like 15, maybe. And he was incredible. I mean, this is a guy who was the lead guitarist for David Lee Roth when he was 20. 20. 2-0. Not in his 20s. 20. You know, I mean, it's just amazing what an absolute genius the guy is. And to have happen what happened is just incredibly disheartening to see. But he's fighting through it. And to record an album 30 years later, I, I, I can't wait to hear it. I think it's going to be awesome. Well, as we've already established on previous episodes, I'm 74 years old. So I saw, and you don't, you probably don't even know this, but I saw uh, David Lee Roth on the Eat Him and Smile tour. Well, there you go. Uh, at Market Square Arena. So uh, I can't say I'm super familiar with the story, but I, what I can say is that that is a very heartwarming story that, that he gets to continue to do what he loves and that he's able to pull together a supportive team. <laughs> Well, with that lineup, as yeah. nice, if not it, if not better than any Avantasia album. Oh, well, as far um, as guitar virtuosos are concerned, my God. I mean, you take your yeah. pick. I mean, there's there's some I'm leaving off that I just, uh, off the top of my head, I can't even remember. But it was just like nine or ten guitars. So I'm like, oh, my God. I mean, he's going to yeah. be on the album, and, and too. It's just it's incredible. Yeah. The vocalist will follow. The bassist and drummers will follow, too. I mean, this is... A very heartwarming story that the world needs. Um, you know, the world needs to hear more stories like that. So that's that's a great story. Um, definitely keep us in the loop on that. I, I mean, will. I know, I I know do, news I... is more my thing, but uh, definitely, you know, reach out, even reach out to him and, and, you know, see if we can make him a friend of the show. No, I think that'd be great. I just, uh, I really want to support, um, I mean, I, we obviously want to support, you know, a lot of the metal acts that we're really into. And it's just, it's... Uh... It's somebody that if you don't know his story, check out his story. Um, and if you can contribute to his campaign and, and pick up the CD through Indiegogo, it's like 15 bucks if you just buy it through that, which is next to nothing. And you'll also get it right away when it comes out. And uh, I think that'll be awesome to do. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, I've already contributed. Um, unfortunately, um, I uh, <laughs> a lot of Well, I guess it's a good thing and a bad thing. Some of the perks have sold out to where you can't get them. Um, So really all that's left is like crazy, insanely expensive or it's just buying the CD. And that's fine. I don't care. Um, But, um, you know, show them the love up front if it's something that you're interested in just to hear. I mean, again, whether it's good or not, which I think it will be. Just the just the technology involved in how they're going to make this in the first place to me is amazing. I mean, you should really check it out. Do yourself a favor and YouTube it. Um, he has a, a documentary on Netflix, if I'm not mistaken, as well. Uh, I believe it's called Not Dead Yet or something along those lines. I saw it a couple of years ago, and it's just so good. Um, and he's writing music with his eyes, man. It's pretty amazing. It really, really is. Very cool story. Good job.
Okay, so how do you want to transition that into me? But just, oh, uh, you can just go into, you know. Well, I don't know. What are you talking okay. about next? Well, I got. You know, I'm trying to decide what direction to go in. Because that, that's kind of a sad story, but it's kind of a cool story all at the same time. Well, no, then just just embrace it and be like, oh yeah, thanks. Okay, and I get to follow up that with, fuck it, just embrace it. You know what I mean? All right, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. Three, two, one, go. All right. So uh, another story that uh, that kind of came out this past week is Bob Coburn, uh, the longtime host of the syndicated radio program Rockline, passed away uh, after a battle with lung cancer. Um, he was 68 years old. Now, I know a lot of older fans like myself will remember Rockline that ran from 1981 all the way up through 2014. And Rockline, um, now I have a very personal kind of story about Rockline is that uh, it was a syndicated program came on on your hard rock station in your neck of the woods you know whatever had it not been for Rockline I never would have discovered Still Climbing by Cinderella which I still consider to be the one of the greatest unknown albums of all time um, that is their best work and it's, and it's a work that should have been heard and it wasn't heard because it came out in 1994 Right, you know, grunge was at its peak. Uh, you know, everybody was listening to Soundgarden and and uh, you know Nirvana and Alice in Chains, and the world of hair metal was dead. But unfortunately, that's right when Cinderella put out their best work. Well, on that episode of Rockline in 1994, I believe it was October or November of '94, I listened to that and I heard a few tracks and I went, "Oh my god, this is great work!" And I not only bought the CD. I will tell anyone who will listen to me what a phenomenal CD that was. Well, Bob Coburn, um, you know, he hosted that show for 33 years. And really, kind of ironically, he got into the business because in 1981, they actually launched the program with another DJ who ran into some immediate medical problems, and he had to replace that gentleman. So... Um, as it turned out, uh, they gave him like five shows and said, we're going to judge you based on these five shows. And apparently it worked out pretty well because he did it for over three decades. Wow. But, you know, Van Halen, Pantera, hell yeah, Def Leppard. I mean, you could go on and on and on. He's look, Bob Coburn was what Eddie Trunk wanted to be. <laughs> wow. So he literally before the days of the Internet, he was all things rock and metal. And if you didn't get an opportunity to listen to Rockline back in the day, you really don't understand the weight that Bob Coburn carried. So I think we should celebrate his life and his contribution to hard rock and metal. Um, you know, he was a, a definitely a great voice for not only hard rock and metal genres as a whole, but for music as a whole. So Wanted to bring that up. We don't normally bring up, you know, the passing of, you know, certain people, but he was such an influential person who wasn't a musician. Well, I'll tell you this. Um, so here's my homework assignment for those who are listening who are in the same category as I am, which is I have very little to no familiarity with Bob Coburn whatsoever, other than I know the name. Um, but uh, maybe it's where I'm from or where I grew up at, but Rockline was never something that I was – privy to on my rock radio station in my neck of the woods growing up so uh, it's never something i really got into or listened to um so my homework assignment just because now you've got me curious um she almost sounds the, like the vin scully of rock and metal almost um would be to i'm sure youtube it or be able to go back and listen to some um of uh, the things he's done um and to i guess really be able to get a, a grip on what it is he did and contributed to the genre. But for anybody um, who could do it for 33 years and still um, have it be a show that is, you know, syndicated and on, you know, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of stations throughout the country and throughout the world, you got to be doing something right. So um, I do respect uh, the uh, 